My, my name is Alan Eugeni and um, I am a trained engineer. Uh, that's how I started my career as an engineer. So I started my flight training in uh, 2009 and um, took about a year or so to go through all the licenses one has to get. Uh, your private license, your commercial license, your multi-engine training, your instrument rating and so on and so forth. And uh, after the process you end up with about 200 or 250 hours of flight experience which of course is means you're a neophyte and uh, you can't really work anywhere. And it took me about four or five years to uh, gain enough experience to uh, be taken seriously uh, and to be considered for a job interview. And at that point I began approaching uh, the larger airlines in Canada. And uh, Air Georgian was the uh, first company to approach me with a serious uh, job offer. And I was, uh, I was glad about that and accepted it uh, gladly. When you start working at a uh, major or regional airline, you expect uh, state-of-the-art working conditions, safety levels, systems to be in place. Certainly that's what the public expects and I think that's what most pilots expect as well. Uh, you're asking what exactly uh, was it that I noticed uh, when I started working at Air Georgian. Um, the list is endless. Uh, in fact, um, I started taking notes. I was uh, so surprised and uh, these notes uh, I became so extensive that I decided to, uh, to write a book um, after my experience there. The occurrences there were uh, safety occurrences that kept happening repeatedly. We had uh, navigation charts sometimes that were incomplete. Our training sometimes was lacking. And then there was the general approach towards maintaining the airplanes, which always had a number of uh, defects, although legal. There, there's always you know, safety concerns when you're flying with an airplane that has some component or components that aren't operational. And uh, while it might happen that there's one or two components that aren't functional for a given flight and will be repaired after the flight, very often we had um, five or ten or more components that, that were, were not working. And flight after flight, the, uh, the aircraft would continue in this, uh, in this state. Typical uh, on these flights were, uh, were the air conditioning system that, uh, that was broken on the airplane. Now we would fly regularly, every day, full flights down to American cities where the, uh, in summertime the temperature was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now without a functioning air conditioning on the airplane, uh, once you're on the ground, you're essentially in an aluminum tube which is heated by the sun on the outside with absolutely no air coming in or out because you can't open the doors or windows obviously. So the temperature inside the aircraft is actually higher than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is true for both the, the operating crew as well as all 50 passengers.